Hello, so I've touched on this a few times before. It's basically a couple of techniques to show how you would illustrate the direction of something in like a technical illustration. This is what we'll be using throughout. We've got a simple arrow, just a low poly little arrow there and a dash. That's pretty much it. Couple of simple examples first. Here they are in the scene. We're gonna turn them off because we're gonna be using instances quite a lot. So let's turn those off for the render. Let's create a new null, let's call it center. Let's create another one and call it path. We'll parent that path null, let's make it red. We'll parent that to the center let's move it out a little bit. Okay, select the center path, go to frame 120, and we'll move that 360 degrees. Actually, let's make that green. That's slightly easier to see. Okay, so there's that path. Now at the end, let's also raise it up a little bit, just to illustrate more of a direction. Perhaps we'll bring it in as well. Let's just press D to bring up the preferences, and under the GL motion, path pre-frames we'll put in 120 just so we can see the full length of this timeline okay that's pretty good first example with the path selected let's press p for properties and under instancer we will add an instance generator let's add that arrow and we'll turn that on so we can see it there it is and under type we'll quite simply go to motion path Let's increase the amount of instances and separation between them. Let's take the scale down a little bit as well. Here they are all nicely following along, but the rotation is not quite right. So under alignment, under the rotation tab, we shall select path. And there it is. That's pretty much our first example sorted. So they're currently all trailing, but we could use time offset to bring them ahead of time. Something else to consider as well, I've reset it so that our arrow is right at the tip of our motion path here. I'm gonna swap out this arrow for the dashes. So I'm gonna replace object with the dash. So we've got dotted lines there. Now back into properties, let's rename that to dots. Let's copy that. We need to add another instance generator and then paste into, and we'll rename that to arrow. Now going into that instance generator, let's replace those dashes for an arrow. So we can see they've been replaced, but we only want one instance of that arrow. Perhaps we can move it forward in time to suit to make it a little larger. So now we have an arrow with following dashes. And if it gets cut off, you're just gonna have to extend your path. For the next example, you may decide that you don't wanna animate the arrows at all. So we're gonna start off with exactly the same setup as before. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna untick these two buttons here. And that is as simple as that, really. We still need this animation on the motion path, but the instances will spread out nicely along it, which also means we can change the shape of that path at any point and everything will follow along nicely. And again, we've got the amount of instances we can change. It begins from the start of the motion path. So you might have to eyeball where to finish to get a nice spread along the path. If we wanted to emphasize a specific part of this path, like with bigger arrows, we can do that just by unticking this scale positions only button here. And then we need to find the point at which we wanna make it larger. So let's say around that point. And what we'll do is we'll add a keyframe for the scale at that point. There we go. and then we can sculpt the size of the arrows accordingly, which is quite a nice feature. And don't forget as well, we could also animate the time offset should you want a little bit of animation. So we'll animate that. Let's animate something like this. 
it's nice it stays scaled at the point we want it to. Now you'll probably run out of instances at that point, so you'll need to increase the amount of instances at the first point, and then under the time offset, you're gonna offset the time offset. For the next example, let's throw something else into the mix. Let's say we want to illustrate the path of fluid running through this pipe, for instance. So I've got this tube here, that's pretty straightforward, and I've got a spline here. Now this is modeled to follow that tube, and that's the path I want my arrows to follow. Now you'd have thought, being a spline, that this would be quite straightforward, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> here we are, ready to go. Let's create a null and call it path. Press M for motion options, under spline control, we will point it to that spline. Okay, now select that spline, press P for properties, under the instancer, we will add an instance generator. Let's add that arrow to that, so we can see it, we'll select that. Type, we want the spline, because that's what it is. Let's distribute these instances along that spline. So there we go, that's quite straightforward. And then uniform scale. Okay, so that's that's the first setup. And if this works for you, you're good to go. Now press D on the keyboard to bring up the preferences. Under GL, you might wanna select show spline if it's not on already, ribbon when selected. Now what this highlights is the rotation along that spline. As it currently stands, we don't have much control over these rotations at each of those nodes. But ideally what we want is manual control over the rotation along that spline. What you may think is actually that's quite simple. All I have to do is select the spline, look for curve to spline, and surely that's sorted. Well sadly that brings in a whole host of <laughs> other issues and funny folding back things. Depending on the complexity of your spline, you could always select all those node points. Press M for motion options. Uh, go to spline control for each of the rotations. It might be worth baking them out at that point. Setting them back to keyframes and adjusting manually. That's certainly one way to go about it. But let's be honest, it's a pain in the ass and there are better ways around it. We're back to as we were before, we've got our modeled spline selected. I've removed the instance generator from that. Now I'm gonna go over to the path. Let's go to 120 frames. And this path has spline control applied to it. And this one here. Let's grab hold of the little blue Z handle here and let's just pull it down until we get to the end of the path. Okay there. So we've got a nice linear motion between the start and the end point. Now let's add our instance generator to that. Add object, we're gonna add that arrow. And as in the previous example, we're gonna use a motion path. There we go, let's give it loads of instances. Let's untick these two so it's not locked to any animation. and then we'll take the scale down. That's fine, as you'll see, it's currently following the rotation of the spline, which is what we'll be changing. First thing we wanna do is sort the spacing of the arrows out. Now, I want to illustrate that the fluid moves quicker at this point, and then slows down through these corners. So the path is selected. I'm gonna press Command F2 to bring up the graph editor. Here it is, so it's a nice linear path from the start to finish. So we need to find that point at which I want less arrows. So between the start point and this point here is fewer arrows. So I'm gonna put a keyframe in there. Press the enter button a couple of times. I'm gonna set the incoming curve to linear. And then I'm gonna move that. So as you can see to have fewer arrows, I'm moving this keyframe closer to the in point. Don't move it up and down, let's move it left and right. So let's have a few more arrows at that point. And then if we wanted, let's say we get to this point, let's add a keyframe in there, 
and it speeds up at this point. So we'll take that incoming curve set to linear. We'll just move that. There we go, so it's only subtle. And then we can change our instances to suit our new path. Okay, we're happy with that. Now I wanna manually control which way these arrows are pointing. So these arrows are currently taking their rotations from the spline. And the reason it's doing that, if we press M for motion options, is because the rotations are set to spline control. Now we need to set these two keyframes to have manual control over this, but it could be worth just flicking through each of these to see if any of these line up to what you had in mind. Chances are they won't, but it's worth a look. So anyway, let's set all these two keyframes. Under the dope track, which is this little thing down here, click on the dotted line. If I right mouse click on this, it's just off screen. Actually, I can type it, can't I? So channel edit mode. I'm in channel edit mode, which means I'm only gonna be affecting the rotation. Now I definitely don't wanna be changing the position because the spline animation on the Z influences our path. So we just wanna be in rotation mode and set to channel, channel edit mode. Good, okay, let's close some of this down. So I've on purposely chose a path that's a little bit wonky and we'll see why in a minute. So here I am at the beginning and it's clearly pointing in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna rotate that round 180 degrees. So that's great. Then when it gets to this point, I wanna start changing so it points upwards. So I'm just gonna double click in here, move to that frame and grab the pitch handle and move it up. So that needs to be at minus 90. There we go. And that's good up to that point. So double click in there and move along. Ah, you see the first problem. We got grumble lock. I can't actually move it 90 degrees in this direction. So this is where a feature from 2020 comes into play. Or is it 2019? It might have been 2018. I don't know. Anyway, this is the <laughs> this is what we have. Press M for motion options. See, we've now got a rotation order option up here. Now there will be a little bit of trial and error as to which one works for you. But I happen to know in this case that the HBP operation order works for this. So let's go back and do those. So I'm gonna highlight those keys there, right mouse click on them and delete, it's just off screen. So they've gone now. So at that point, we're all good. At this point, we wanna be at minus 90. Okay, up to there, double click to uh, add a keyframe. Now, bank we want at 90. That's good. And we're okay up to that point. Double click. Cool, so like I say, that's a very handy option to have. The only pain will be which operation works for you. This is all editable, so highlight the keyframes and tweak away. So if we want at this point, We could add a keyframe in there and just sort of tweak it accordingly. And the nice thing about the instance generator is you can just pop in and change the parameters as I showed earlier. So just a couple of basic approaches there. As ever, I hope it was useful.